Today, on Be Something Wonderful, how to transcend 3D world appearances when all hell breaks loose. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I heard from one of you that said, Tom, I've been practicing manifesting for some time now, and I've manifested some pretty good things in my life. But, but the, the real thing that I really wanted is to be married. And I was engaged to get married. But then my, my worst fear happened, that we broke up and now he's getting engaged to somebody else. And I was vying for a promotion at work that was gonna get me more money so I could pay off some old debts and I lost out on that promotion. And now I even have some health issues that are, that are rearing their head, some old health issues that are coming back. And now I'm feeling, low, I'm feeling lower than I ever had. And I just don't know how to turn this around. I, I, I'm really afraid. And so guys, we're gonna unpack this today and more. Here's what I wanna say. And this really, I want to really go to the, the book of Job today, because in that story in scripture, remember, it's all a metaphysic, it's a metaphor, it's a story for the uh, states of mind or our consciousness. It's a metaphysical book, right? But when they talk about the state of Job, that's the state when you're at your lowest point. That's when it feels like all hell has broken loose, broken loose, has broken loose. <laughs> remember Job, right? That that Satan and God were talking, right? Satan, of course, is, that, is, is your fears and your doubts, right? God is your higher state. And, 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 and Job lost everything. He lost all, of, he was very rich, right? And he had a wonderful family. He lost his possessions. He lost his wealth. He lost his daughters, right? They, his daughters got killed and he lost his health. He lost it all. And then what did he say? For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Keep in mind, and, and, and it says in Scripture that, that, that Job was upright, that he was blameless, that he was a good man, that he, that he, was, he felt like he was righteous, that he was following the Lord, that he, that he had faith in God, right? But then he's asking himself, what, how could this happen, right? Remember, the state of Job is that aspect of you that believes in the power to create your own reality, just like Job had faith in God, right? He was righteous. He was said to be upright, right? To create your own reality, the Christ in you, your imagination, yet within, he still moved by outer appearances of the 3D world. Job was still fearful that he would lose that prosperity. His greatest fear that he would lose this great life that he had and that it was dependent, hear this, it was dependent on his faith in God, on him living a righteous or a right life, having faith, being a good person, right? Having faith in a power outside himself to reward him, right, for a good life. And now he feels like he's being, he doesn't know. He feels like he's being punished. Why? He's wondering, right? He's going through all those states of consciousness of wondering what's happening here right? And so it's, it's like you. You practice the processes. You imagine your wish fulfilled. You manifest stuff, but there's still a fear it won't work out, or it, you won't get what you manifested, or what you do have will be taken away from you. In other words, it's that great fear that you're going to receive what you don't want, or, or not get what you want, there's still that fear of non-fulfillment. Even though you, you do believe in this power, you do believe in manifesting, in, in, even in your imagination, but you, don't, you still feel separate from it. The, because if you're feeling any fear of the unwanted or any fear that you, won't get your, that you won't get what you want, then you're still feeling separation from that I am power within. You're still feeling separation from God. That's what Job was feeling, right? He had everything, but the greatest fear, and he says it here, the greatest fear has happened. I dreaded that this would happen. And of course, we manifest our greatest fears because our thoughts, our feelings, and our beliefs line up with that. And that's the law working. God's all love, but God's all law as well. And God gives you the free choice to believe or think and feel and assume what you want. And if you're going to, be, if you're going to have that greatest fear, God gives you that choice to feel that. 
to believe that. And that's what you manifest. So I really want to hit this today because this is the last step really that you got to make, right? And here's what it says in Job. There was a man, this is, they're talking about Job, in the land of, uh, of Oz, whose name was uh, Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Hear this. So Job was, was blameless, was upright, right? He wasn't, he wasn't a sinner, right? But we, we, we've talked about sin. Sin's only not identifying with your highest ideal. But he wasn't seen. He was seen as blameless and upright. And he, he feared God. Remember, fear God in the Old Testament means being in awe of God being in awe of that power. So there gives you an indication that still Job, Job had faith, but in a power that was outside him. He was in awe of it, or he feared God, and he shunned evil. So he didn't do bad things. He, he didn't think he deserved what he got. But remember, it's not about whether you deserve it or not. Everything is what you deserve by right of consciousness, by right of your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. So if you believe in fear, then that's what you create. Do you hear this? That's what we're talking about. That he shunned evil, but what does that really mean? It means he had some resistance or he had some fear. It implies that he believed in evil. He believed that, that there was God and there was evil, that there were two powers. It was his belief in two powers. He wasn't all the way there yet, right? Shunning evil means you believe in evil. It means there's some resistance to it. So the land... That land represents the development of inner strength through contemplative thought and debate within that leads to truth or error. So the land of Job represents that state where he goes within. When all this stuff happens to him, he's got to go in and debate what's going on. How do I reach for that Christ consciousness? So really, that's the story of Job. It's about the dilemma or the problems, the suffering that all was rooted, all that suffering, all any suffering is rooted in fear. It's rooted in sep feeling the separation from God. That's what all suffering is rooted in. And that's what Job was feeling. Then there's debate. There's that inner turmoil, right? Your outer righteousness versus your inner righteousness, right? Your spiritual understanding. You're trying to come to a conclusion on this. But the only conclusion, the only choice is a decision between your I amness, the only power, that one power with God, or a power outside of you. Just continue to be in awe of the law the law or the Lord, as opposed to one with the law or the Lord. Do you hear this? That's what's going on here in this story. So even as you are in awe of your imagination in the processes, there's still that fear, even if it's a small one, that you won't get what you want or you will get what you don't want, even as you try to do the right thing. You're doing the right thing, right? You're good to people. You're, you're, you, you know that everyone is you pushed out. So you forgive and you give, but you still have a fear of non-fulfillment. You have a fear that you're somehow separated from your desires and separated from what you want. And that you, you have to do processes and believe in that awe of imagination to get what you want. That's what's going on here. That's Job, right? He was upright. He was blameless. He shunned evil. He was in awe or he feared God. Right? But he was in awe of the law, right? So why suffer? That's the question. That was what Job was asking. The only reason you suffer is a belief in separation from your I amness. It's a belief in that 3D reality that it's separate from you and that you, you will suffer from that. Once you know it's coming from you and you're one with it, you can't possibly suffer as you can create it, right? You worship the creations in the conceptions rather than the creator in the conceiver. We've talked about this. Neville Goddard talks about this, right? We're worshiping the creations and the conceptions and the processes, right? And what we want to get rather than the creator and the conception that I am this. This is what Job was going through, right? Job was going through this process, worshiping his, his wealth, his fi family and everything that he had, but not realizing that it wasn't a power independent of him, right? You give away, you, work, you give away your power to your desires or to the outer appearances in the 3D world. Right. So let's hit this a little bit more. So, and this is what Satan says to God, right? Does Job fear God for nothing? In other words, why is, in, why is Job in awe of God? Because, because he believed that, that, that to ha if he has faith in God, that he gets to keep his stuff, 
his possessions, his family, his, his prosperity, that it depended on God, right? That, so this is why he suffered, right? Job was outwardly rich and blessed. He had possessions, and, and this is what the Bible says. It talks about all his possessions, right? All of his donkeys and, and, and everything, his cattle, all of it. In other words, you, are you in awe of the law for the I amness or the awareness of your power within, one with God, or as a means to an end to manifest your desire? Are you in awe of, of that law, that imagination, what's within you, just for God's sake, for the sake of God within you, or is it to get something or manifest something from the outside world? Is it to make something happen in the outside world? Right? So what's the key? What's the secret? You do it for God's sake. You know the expression, for God's sake. That's what that means, meaning for the sake of fulfillment within, for the inner feeling of fulfillment, not to get something from 3D reality. Right? Not to, not to be, not to be um, uh, uh, in bondage to 3D, right? Job, Job didn't suffer out of sin or punishment. He wasn't punished for anything. You're not being punished if things are not going right in your life. You're, it's not because you sinned, right? There is no sin. God doesn't condemn, because, God doesn't, um, condemn you because God never judges you, right? Or God doesn't judge because God never condemns. Both of those, right? God doesn't recognize sin, right? Nor do, do, did he suffer to learn a lesson in faith, right? That he feared God and had faith. God's not teaching you a lesson. What is it? It's by right of consciousness. That's all everything happened. Rather, it's to be in awe of the Lord of the law for God's sake, the God within you, because fear doesn't exist. It's to recognize that fear doesn't make sense when you're identified the oneness of that I amness, that you know fulfillment's within you, that non-fulfillment's an impossibility, that it's, it's not possible when you're one with God. That's what it's teaching. So all that suffering for Job was the inner world. It was him, it was him fearing and not loving and not moving to that I am awareness, right? That's all of that pain, all of that suffering. God is love and law. You are made in his image with the same creative powers to be, do, or have whatever you desire. That's love, right? That gift from God, those creative powers, to, to giving you free will to choose, right? But also, it's free choice. The free will to choose to recognize your oneness with him. That Christ consciousness, or to choose separation from it, in whatever degree you feel that separation. Right, even if you kind of believe. That's the law part. Right? That's the law part. It's referred to as Satan in the story. Satan is just separation. You feeling separated from that God within. That's what Satan represented in the story of Job. Right? All that turmoil, all that suffering was, was within you, feeling you're separate from it. Right? And so Job's three friends represent that debate and turmoil that, you go, that goes on in your mind. The thoughts, the contrary thoughts, the doubts, the fears, the limitation, the lack, all of that. It's Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Those are thoughts of consciousness. Those were his three friends, right? And all of them telling that either he sinned or that he was, he, that question whether he really was upright and blameless, right? Question whether he was really clean. This is what uh, Bildad says, how can he be clean who is born of woman, right? That you, that, that you must be thinking something or judging something or based on appearances. And Alphaz, and remember, Alphaz um, represents, that name represents thoughts of strength and purification that emanate from the subconscious, right? But if those thoughts go through filters of fear, they now become, they now become uh, they now become manifestations of the unwanted or what you don't want, right? But when you forgive those, and this is important because that's what happens at the end when it says Job forgives his friends. He forgives those thoughts. He purifies those, those thoughts even more with that greater consciousness. So when forgiven, they're recognized through that I am awareness that leads to divine purification and true understanding. That's one understanding, but this is true understanding. Build that of thoughts of judgments, right? And, and then Zophar 
thoughts of blame and self-condemnation, right? We start blaming ourselves or we start blaming the outside world. We just start blaming everybody. You blame yourself. You blame the 3D world. Everything seems against me. All hell's breaking loose, right? I must have done something wrong or you blame somebody else. Or you feel like a victim or you, that you, must have commit, you must have done something wrong, right? This, all of that are just fearful states of mind. They're illusions and they're not real. It's, it's you feeling separate from that I am awareness. That's the only reason, right? The only reason all hell breaks loose, right? And that you feel and that your worst fears seem to come true, right? So, and then even at his lowest, hear this, even at his lowest, his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity or in other words, your wholeness, right? Your faith in God, right? Curse God and die. This is what she says, right? Strong verse, but what does that represent? If that represented his wife, that would, would, would cause you pause, right? To have questions. But it represents the 3D world. It's your thoughts. That's a thought you're having. Remember, his wife is a state of consciousness that you're thinking, that Job's thinking that, that with all this that's coming down in me, why don't I just give up? Why don't I just curse it all, that the, that the law doesn't work, that manifesting doesn't work, that imagining your wish fulfilled doesn't work, right? That it's all against me, that I'm not God, that it's not within me. It's that desperation that we feel when all hell breaks loose, right? But the, the, the answer is not to divorce your, remember, you're, you're married to the 3D world as long as you're having this 3D experience. That's what his wife represents, right? You're not going to divorce the 3D world. You're going to transcend it. You're going to transcend the appearances, right? So, but we still remained married to the 3D world, right? Otherwise, you would think, why is he still married to her, right? <laughs> That's what it, and then Elihu, in, in, in the story, the voice that's talking to, to the voice that's taught, the, the spiritual voice, the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit talking to Job now. That's Job now going into prayer, finally realizing that, that he wasn't fully, he was believing in, in a power that was partly outside of himself, that he wasn't fully feeling, believing in his I amness. So he finally gives, goes within, reaches deeply within his imagination of God and prays. He says, let the Almighty answer me. This is Job 31, 35. His three friends then are said to leave him. So those lower thoughts of lack, of doubt, of thinking that you're a sinner, or thinking that you, that you need to be condemned, or thinking that you did something wrong, or that something must be wrong with you, right? That you're unworthy, that you're not deserving by something you did. All of that goes away, and then even Satan backs off. You don't hear from Satan anymore in the story. That lack and limitation totally goes out as you rise in consciousness to your realization of your I amness right? Where there is no, now, no separation, where there is no possibility of non-fulfillment. There never is. I want you to hear this. There never is a possibility of non-fulfillment. You create that. You make it up. It's all within you. Your wish fulfilled is already done. It's within you. You create all the possibilities of non-fulfillment through fear, right? That's what we're talking about. His three friends leave, Satan backs off the fear and doubts, then he rises in Christ's consciousness to his true righteousness, not the righteousness of the stuff, all the stuff that he owned, including his beautiful family. It was all wonderful, but that represented the outward righteousness, the, outward, the outer world, the world of stuff and things, right? Using it as a means to an end, right? Believing in God, believing in the processes, believing in your imagination to get something from it as a means to an end versus the end in itself. The I amness, that fulfillment is the end in itself. It's not a means to an end to get something, right? That's big. And, the, and then it said in um, Job 42.10, <clears throat> and the Lord, or the law, restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. In other words, when you went in within and you, and you moved from those thoughts of lack, of doubt, of fear, of thinking that you don't deserve it or thinking that you sinned or thinking that something's wrong with you and that, that you're not worthy. You move from all of that fear. Indeed, the Lord or the law gave Job twice as much as he had before. So he got double. What does that mean? He not only got the, the, the material 
uh, stuff, the material stuff that he had, he got more important than that was his, the spiritual righteousness, right? Which is infinite, which is unending. Inner and outer riches. Metaphysical meaning of the number two represents harmony and unity with Christ's mind consciousness. In other words, harmony and unity with your wish fulfilled. The harmony and unity of, 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 of your heart and mind of, 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 with your imagination twice as much. That's what that means, right? He's aligned with your lines now with your wish fulfilled. When you error, fearful thoughts cause you to miss the mark. That's what the error means. It means missing the mark. It means not identifying what you wish fulfilled. You're a higher ideal, right? But then you go within. That's your state of Elihu, the Holy Spirit, your imagination, your oneness with your I amness, and you pray and you imagine your wish fulfilled. That really is how to transcend 3D appearances of the world when all hell seems to break loose. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We also have a Facebook group, the Ambassadors at Be Something Wonderful. You can join that. And you can follow us at, uh, at Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. And also you can visit our website anytime at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. Until next time, with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude, this is Tom. See you soon.